Okie dokie, friends. Do I got a video for you today? Oh, yeah, I sure do. You betcha. <laughs> this is quite the video. Uh, there's a lot going on. Yeah, there is. You're not going to want to miss today's video. It's a fun time. It's a good time. There's some surprises in today's video. Uh, lots of deep cleaning, lots of decluttering, organization, lots of motivation, as well as a really good discussion in today's video. This is actually one of the most important, if not most important, uh, discussions I've ever had on the channel. So I really hope that you enjoyed today's video, but it's going to be a roller coaster today. <laughs> Today's video is part three of the 2024 spring deep cleaning series. It's also part three of the cleaning confession series. So this series is two in one, but this series is in collaboration with a very good friend of mine, Shannon. Her channel is called leaf like on a tree. I will have all of her information linked in the description box below. I will also have the playlist for this series linked in the description box below. Because this is such a long series and Shannon and I had uh, other videos planned out uh, between, you know, making this series, we came up with the schedule part one and two, we uploaded at the same time. Part three, we're uploading separately. So uh, Shannon's part three of the series will be uploaded next week. And then we have one more video in the series, part four and part four, we will be uploading together. So that's kind of the schedule that we came up with, <laughs> but please head on over to Shannon's channel. Once you're done watching today's video, you are going to love her as much as I do. Thank you so much for being here with me. I hope you enjoyed today's video. But long story short, because we're going to get back into the video, I just wanted to mention this because I am talking funny. I look a little droopy on my left side. <laughs> I can't feel the left side of my face so or my tongue. <laughs> so Monday, today's Saturday, the 15th, on Monday, I my tongue went numb. And I was like, and it felt thick, like thick and numb. But I can still feel it, you know? Like I can, I still feel, it's just sort of numb and I can't control the left side of my face right now. So my tongue went numb and I was like, I thought I, thought I had an allergic reaction to something. I didn't know what, <laughs> but I thought I had an allergic reaction. So then Wednesday rolled, uh, rolled around, sorry, I'm having a hard time talking, even more now, even more so than usual. Uh, I had a filling done. Uh, I had to go to the dentist. I have a lot of dental work. I have a whole plan, but I got some fillings done on the upper left hand side of my mouth. So anyway, uh, Thursday rolled around. My tongue was still numb. I even asked my dentist about the numb, the numb tongue and he's like, well, everything looks okay, but you should probably go get checked out <laughs> and I was like nah it's fine this is why when you know something is off when something's wrong go in go into the doctor go to the doctor Ian and myself we are so bad when it comes to like our kids my parents Ian's parents our family and friends it's like no you get there now like you go we go but when it comes to ourselves it's like nah it's fine seriously like no it's not you go go to the doctor Anyway, sorry, I was angry with myself because I should have went in a while ago. So Thursday rolls around, my tongue is still numb, only now my lips are numb, like they're starting to go numb and I'm starting to get a little concerned but then I thought, oh, it was from the Novocaine or whatever they give when they numb me up. Yesterday rolls around and my tongue is still numb, it's even more numb, it feels fatter, it feels fat, I know that sounds weird, and my lips are even more numb and I'm having issues on my cheek now. And I thought, still thought I had an allergic reaction and it was from the dentist. This morning, Saturday rolls around and I'm filming and I probably looked not myself because I was having a panic attack. Um, I was starting to really freak out. My mom comes over to pick up the kids and she's like, what's going on with your face? And I'm like, you see it too and she's like danielle do you have bell's palsy and i was like what's that i didn't even know what it was she's like you need to go to the emergency room now and i was like okay so ian and i 
went to the emergency room. They at first were a little concerned that I might be having a stroke because it's similar like symptoms. Like it freaked me out. I was, I, I honestly, for a second there thought like maybe I was having a stroke. My eye is twitching too. Like everything on this side is just twitchy. I go to the, I, I go to the emergency room. They do, they, they check my vitals. My blood pressure is like up because I thought I was having a stroke. Doctor comes in, talks to me for a little bit, ruled out a stroke. Then my blood pressure went down. They took me into the back room and they prescribed me. They, they did say it was Bell's palsy. And um, ball, Ball's palsy, Bell's palsy. I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not even 100% sure exactly what it is. I just found this, I found out what this was hours ago. So I'll link some information in the description box below if you wanna know more information. I will read that information. I don't know what I'm gonna link yet, but I would like to know more about this because I didn't even know what this was. I had never, you can even see like by my eyebrow. I didn't even know what it was. Uh, I also have issues in my inner ear right now where if I if I hear loud noises, it feels like it's piercing into my brain and it feels like I'm full of fluid, but it's affecting the nerves on the side of my face and my tongue is so numb, like it's numb, it's so weird. But my eye hurts because I'm not blinking. So anyway, I'm fine, the doctor prescribed me steroids and an antibiotic. and eye drops and then he told me to wear tape over my left eye tonight so because what can happen is your you know when your eye isn't blinking like it should be it, it'll get dry and then you can scratch your eye really easily because my eye just hurts anyway i just wanted to mention that i'm okay but i did look a little not myself earlier when i was filming and it was because i was starting to really panic because it was moving from my mouth up to my eye and I was like, what's going on? Predazone and Val, Valacyclovir. V-A-L-A-C-Y-C-L-O-V-I-R. Jeez. And Predazone. Dude, the, 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 the Volcano uh, pills look huge. Dude, that's like a Tootsie Roll. I gotta swallow that, what the? Okay, so I know it looks like a lot. It's any time that I pull everything out at once, it always looks like a lot, but it's really not. It's not, it's, it, 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 it is, maybe that's just me trying to convince myself it's not. Does this look like a lot? Yeah, it's a lot. Well, there we have it. <laughs> All right. Um, this is kind of a similar situation with like the bathroom. Um, I think I think I have too much stuff stuff. I think that we, in some areas, I I think I still have too much stuff in my kitchen. I still think I have too much stuff in the fourth season which is an addition, it's a four season porch. We'll talk about that when we get in there. I have too much in these cabinets. I have too much in the bathroom. That's actually the only air, well, let's not forget the mud room, the entryway closet under the bed in the basement, okay? Let's, so um, today's, um, sorry. <laughs> this eye. Um, uh, this is kinetic sand. It's hard sort of <laughs> um it's old and zoe there like there was so much more this is just what's left over like there was so much more than this zoe will not let this go because her grandma judy who passed away years ago gave her this and she knows it and she remembers and she doesn't want to let it go the thing is is she never plays with it anymore like ever and who knows what's in it 
you know it's like i'm sure it's fine but is it so this is a hard one for her now these cabinets are mostly zoe's cabinets zoe is an artiste she that's she does every single day she draws she paints she draws she does arts and crafts every single day and that is why these cabinets seem to like blow up more frequently because she is in these cabinets every day and then ian and i use these drawers every day well maybe not these two but the other ones so these these areas become chaotic pretty quickly so i have to do decluttering and organization maintenance on this area much more frequently the candle cabinet because the other cabinet is storing my candles and wax melts that's fine that cabinet actually looks pretty good um so i'm not going to worry about that in today's video uh i like i uh i've said this before many times on the channel i do not show my kids on the channel i do not put my kids on social media so uh when we declutter and organize it's very difficult for me to show you what they're doing but trust me we are working a lot off camera and the kids make the final decisions on all of their items so i just wanted to mention that i don't let go of anything uh i don't let go of anything without questioning it no that didn't make sense backtrack i don't let go of anything that isn't mine did that make sense if i'm helping other people declutter like my husband, my kids, my mom, my father-in-law, they're making the final decisions on everything, except the cabin. Tom, my father-in-law, it's his cabin, we call it the family cabin though. Uh, he gave me full permission to let go of whatever I wanted to. I still don't. I still have him go through everything that I think could be decluttered. So, uh, cause I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, I don't wanna let go of something that may be special to someone. I would feel awful. So I, uh, I'm gonna set a pile aside for the things that I think we can let go of and then Zoe can go through it. I don't think we need to keep these things, uh, but we'll see. I've been keeping these because they're brand new in the package, but we also have these. Um, every year the kids get new headphones for school. So, I mean, I would keep these so we don't have to get new ones next school year. I'm just going to put them away though. I don't think they need to be in there. The very first thing that I want to get into in today's video is our cleaning confessions discussion. I want to get into that right away. Uh, but after our cleaning confessions discussion, I do want to talk a little bit about what was done in today's video. Uh, there's some stuff that I want to talk about in regards to deep cleaning, decluttering, organizing, uh, how I did things in today's video, talk a little bit about the dining room and the four season porch. I also want to mention the four season porch, uh, later on in today's video, I get a lot of questions in regards to that area. Uh, there's some things, uh, in the next video that I want to talk about a little bit. There's also some future home projects that I want to talk about, uh, like stuff that I have to get done in the dining room, like the dining room chairs and some of the cabinets. I wanted to briefly talk about some of those things too. So I will get into all of that once we're done with our cleaning confessions discussion. Today's cleaning confessions conversation, our discussion today is actually sort of two topics that I'm going to talk about. Uh, the first thing is what, how, why do I still have so much crap? Towards the end of today's video, I'm going to show you everything that we decluttered. I filled the table in the four season full of stuff. That's all going. Plus there was stuff on the floor next to the table that I let go of as well. And when I looked at that, I thought to myself, how, what, how, why <laughs> do I still have so much crap? And a lot of this stuff is stuff that isn't new. It's stuff I've had for a while. I just haven't let go of. And it, it did. It took me back. I was like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> I'm at a point in my decluttering journey where I feel like I'm just doing the decluttering maintenance. I'm not really doing the heavy decluttering anymore. Decluttering maintenance is something that I will do forever. I will always have to declutter, organize, clean. These are just things that I'm, I'm going to have to do the rest of my life. So things are always going to come 
in and out of the home. But I do feel like I'm at a point where it's just decluttering maintenance. But in today's video, when I looked at that table, it felt like I was sort of doing the heavy decluttering again. Grant, it, it's not as it's not to the extent of what I was doing when I first started to declutter or even in the middle of my decluttering journey. But still, it felt like it didn't feel like decluttering maintenance to me. It felt like I was doing a little bit of the heavy decluttering. But why did it feel like the heavy decluttering in today's video? And a lot of that has to do with the fact that I, I, I still have a lot that I need to work on. There's obstacles and hurdles I'm still trying to overcome. There's struggles that I still face throughout this process. This may be a constant forever. I think that, you know, going back to the last video, uh, I worked on the bathroom. When I took everything out of the cabinets and drawers, laid it out on the counter, I looked at it and I thought, I still have a lot of essential items. This is a lot. And I've tried creating boundaries for my essential items because I've come to terms with the fact that I'm always going to have multiples of essential items. Essential items is a category uh, that, I always want a lot of, I have this want, need, urge to hoard essential items. Essential items is almost a security for me. It's a security almost to have options of things, but especially for essential items, it, it is almost like a security for me to know that I have all of these options here, especially for things that we really need. I'm okay with having multiples of those things. I just don't think that it's necessary for me to have seven, eight tubes of toothpaste. And I started to kind of see that I had a lot. Maybe I'm slipping back in old ways. I need to revisit the boundaries on my essential items because boundaries are so good and so necessary for me. So, you know, that's a category of item that I'm always going to, I think, have to work on. Sentimental items are another you know, category of item that items that I really struggle to make decisions on. I have a very difficult time with my hard categories of items, like for example, home and seasonal decor, holiday seasonal decor, decor in general. Home decor, holiday seasonal decor brings me so much joy. I absolutely love decorating. I'm not going to be, I, and I've said this so many times before, I'm never going to be super minimal with those types of things. Uh, because I do love it so much. I'm not going to deprive myself of the things that really bring me joy and that I actually love, need, and use. Uh, but again, that's another category where I, I try to set boundaries with myself. It's okay for me to have these things, but you know, not go super over, overboard or keep things simply to fill a space. I've recognized that now. There's times where I would keep things just to fill a space. I only keep things now when I come across something, I, I will only keep things that I absolutely love, want, need, and use, things that bring me joy. So that's, you know, I have many categories, hard categories of items that I have a difficult time making decisions on. I also have a very difficult time with my arts and crafts stuff. Like in today's video in the cabinet in the Four Season where that organizer is, that is full of my arts and crafts stuff, DIY projects, future DIY projects. I have to set boundaries for those items because I see a potential DIY in everything, literally in everything. And I will keep stuff that is honestly junk. And I feel like in today's video, that's what I let go of. A lot of arts and crafts stuff that was in that cabinet, a lot of stuff that was under the sink in the four season, that was honestly junk. And I, I, I recognize that. And as long as I recognize, okay, we don't want to keep stuff that really is just honestly trash. We want to let go of those things. And I had to tell myself that. Um, there's a lot of things I have to work on. There's areas that I, I absolutely need to improve on. And I recognize that in today's video when I looked at that table. Before, I would really get down on myself if I were to see something like that, the, 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 the amount of stuff that I decluttered in today's video. I would really get down on myself. For example, uh, I would say more so in the middle of my decluttering journey, 
when I started to see improvements in my home, when I started to see uh, my home was looking and feeling the way that I wanted it to, I, I started to see that I wasn't decluttering as much. I felt really good about that, but then I would move into another area where it was a chaotic hot mess and I would feel like I was doing the heavy decluttering again. And I would look at this pile and I would feel like I was failing. I'd be like, wait a minute, I've done all of this work. I've been doing such a good job. I've let go of so much. How do I still have all of this? Why? What am I doing wrong? I would, I would really get frustrated with myself and down on myself and feel like I was failing. I don't do that anymore. When I see a pile like I did in today's video, when I seen everything that I decluttered in today's video, I looked at it and thought, okay, this is, this is a lot. Uh, it's going now. It's not going to take up any more space. You're getting rid of it now. You're letting go of things that you don't need, want, or use. So this is good. Progress is progress. I give myself more grace. I, I, I'm much more patient with myself now. But the biggest reason for that, and this brings me into my next point, is because I have defined what my goals are when it comes to decluttering. I have defined what minimalism means for my family and I. In the beginning of my decluttering journey, and even in the middle of my decluttering journey, I hadn't really define what my goals were for decluttering. When I started to declutter, I almost immediately went into minimalism. Like that was the goal. My goal was to be as minimal as possible. And I think what my goal should have been was to simply declutter because I think I added a lot of extra stress and pressure to the situation because I was very new at decluttering, especially at the volume of decluttering that I was doing, if that made sense. And not that I regret anything because it's led me to where I am today. I would do this whole process over again just to be where I'm at today. My home is much more simplified. It's much more minimal. My home is so much easier to manage. I would absolutely do it again to get where I am today. But I do think because I am such an impatient person, I am so impatient. Okay, I just got done wiping the inside of that one out. That one was fine. I'm gonna be honest, I don't even think I'm going to buy uh, microfiber cloths anymore. Cause I love these Swedish dish cloths so much because when you go to wring them out, because I'm always wringing out, like rinsing out, my microfiber cloths and these Swedish dish cloths, it just, every, it like, it's weird. It like absorbs everything. And then when you go to rinse it off, it just falls off. I, I love it. So I don't think, these are all cards by the way. My family and I are big card givers. So Thanksgiving, Halloween, Christmas, Easter, uh, Oh my gosh, Valentine's Day, birthday cards, blank cards, I mean, you name it, it's all in here. So I keep all those in there and my labels, my spice labels. This is all work related stuff. And that's good. So these two are good. Um, see, like, I kept these two because. They have the thing on it, the contact paper, and I think it's so pretty. But what am I, I'm gonna get rid of these. I ran out of spray paint, but anyway, I'm gonna paint this spray painted. I might just do the top and then leave the bottom brown, like wood. I think that would look kind of cute. Or I could just get rid of it. Cause where are you gonna where are you gonna put this? Yeah, you know what? Never mind. I'm gonna get. I'm just gonna get rid of it. <laughs> okay, so I got this organizer the last time that I uh, decluttered and organized in here. I actually want another one of these. These are so nice. I'll uh, 
link this in the description box below because these are so wonderful, super easy to put together, and I love them. Uh, it's staying, you know, sort of, you know, organized, but I'm going to get rid of a lot of my wood rounds. Now, the reason why I have so many is because a long time ago, um, you know, there, what? there was a bookshelf that's now in Lucas's room, my son's room, that I wanted to put in the mudroom because at one point in time I was going to make the mudroom an office. Okay, so I brought it in and I will, when I was in the middle of making it an office, I wanted to do something really cool to the um, bookshelf and I put all of these wood rounds on the side of the bookshelf. Well, it didn't stay, it didn't work because again, you have to put like a polyurethane or something, you know, like a gel, what is that called? Um, so it's like a flat surface so it all stays put. I didn't do that so they all fell off. Well, I took them all off, repainted it, put it in Lucas's room. It acts as like a dresser for him too. It works great. It's so weird talking because I feel like I'm going to the right. <laughs> um, so I've used these wood rounds on various DIY projects. I've taken them off of DIY projects. And the thing is, is that they're getting really beat up. And I don't have a plan for them. I don't want to get rid of all of them. I got them from Hobby Lobby a long time ago. And that one's good. This one, you know, I can't get this off the back. So that can go. This can go. That can go. So I'm just going to, that can go. I, I'm just going to get rid of the ones that are like really bad that I just can't. Like, I'm not going to take the time to really make these pretty. So like that one can go. That's good. These all are going to get tossed. I just immediately rushed from right past decluttering into I'm going to I'm going to start my journey to minimalism because when I emptied out my mudroom because the mudroom is where it started. I loved it so much that I wanted to just run through my house and get rid of as much stuff as I could. And I was going to be on this journey to minimalism. And I think that it would have turned into that. I just should have slowed it down and defined what my goals were a little bit more. The big difference now is that because I know exactly what my goals are and I've defined what minimalism means for my family and I, it makes things so much easier. I feel so much better so much better. I cannot describe how much better I feel. You know, minimalism to me, and this is just personally what minimalism means to my family and I, I think minimalism can mean very different things for different people. And this is just my personal opinion. I think that you can tailor minimalism into what it needs to be for you and your family. I think you can make minimalism work for how you want it and need it to function for you and your family. I absolutely do believe that because in the beginning of my journey, I was so hung up on the number of things. I used to think minimalism was X amount of things. It was about the quantity. And now for me personally, my opinion, I don't think that. I don't think minimalism is an X amount of things. I don't think it has anything to do with the quantity. I think it has everything to do about how you want your home to look and function. Minimalism to my family and I means a more simplified home, a more simplified lifestyle, being intentional, quality over quantity. It means keeping the things that we actually love, want, use, enjoy. You know, it means a more manageable home. That's what minimalism means to, to my family and I. I never went into this. I have never considered myself an extreme minimalist. Never have, never will. And I think that's why for a long time throughout my journey, if you've been with me a while, you've heard me say this a thousand times before, that I used to consider myself a moderate minimalist because I didn't know how else to explain it. I felt like I had to put a label on myself. But the truth is, is that I don't. And I don't think it's moderate minimalism. I've definitely never been an extreme minimalist. My family and I never will be. That will never, ever happen. It was never, ever the goal. 
But more than anything, I, I don't even think it has anything to do with being a moderate minimalist. It has everything to do with just living a more simplified life, you know, being very mindful and intentional on the things that we keep and bring into the home and keeping the thing, keeping the things that we really love and enjoy. I don't think it has anything to do with the quantity. So that's, that is what minimalism means to my family and I, and I hadn't really defined that or my goals. And I think that when you go into this decluttering process, because it can be such a process, very rewarding, but it's, at least for me, it's been really hard. I still struggle with it. I, I, I will always, always have struggles in this process because, you know, I still even now want to re, you know, not that anything's wrong. I'm just first putting that out there, but it, it everything's fine, but it is a stressful time right now. Like I'm, kind of going through some things right now. It's a stressful time. And I want to revert back to my coping mechanism, which is shopping. I think that's why I've been window shopping so much online. I've talked a lot about that in the last couple of videos that I've been window shopping, not necessarily buying anything, but just teasing myself by being online and looking at stuff when I, I really don't need to be. But it's such a force of habit for me. It's such a coping mechanism that I want to so bad. And consumerism is, it, it, it's hard for, for me to get away from that. And it's such a, it's like a shiny new piece of decor for me <laughs> that I just want so bad, but it, it's hard. It's, it's that temptation. And I'm human. I still want to, you know, consume. And because things are stressful, I want to revert back into my old coping mechanisms and that's shopping. So I think I will always have these struggles, but when I first went into decluttering, what I, what I think I should have done is really ask myself, why am I doing this? Why am I decluttering? And I kind of had a good foundation for that. But this helps bring clarity, focus, and it helps to continue to motivate you, to continue to motivate you. You know, what are, what are your decluttering goals? What areas and items do you want to work on? And really setting realistic goals, you know, keeping the expectations really realistic, almost setting the bar low at first, at least at first. You know, what do I want my spaces to look and feel like? You know, what, how do I want my home to act? How do I want my home to function? What do I want it to look like? You know, and when I think about that now, I, I think, cause I think sometimes when we think of minimalism, even in the beginning of my journey, I would think, and I love the minimalist aesthetic, don't get me wrong, but it isn't my style. It's not my thing personally. And I used to think, okay, if I do this journey, I'm going to have to have this aesthetic. No, I don't have to have that aesthetic. I love the pieces of decor that I have that I've kept because I love them and it makes it feel like a home for me. I want my home to feel cozy and warm and inviting. Not that I'm saying a minimalist aesthetic isn't. I'm not saying that at all. Um, I'm, and, and whatever your aesthetic is, whatever your style is, do what makes you happy. You know, if you love bright neon colors in your home, go for it. You know, if you, if you love a more industrial look or a farmhouse look or the minimalist aesthetic, whatever you like, do what makes you happy. Life is too short. Do what makes you happy, whatever you love. Another thing I should have focused on is, you know, what am I going to do to help myself? And I also had a foundation for this too, because this can be something as simple as setting piles. Uh, a donate pile, a keep pile, a, a, a toss recycling pile, a sell pile, even a maybe pile, which I created way too many, which is something else I struggle with. <laughs> I actually have to make a video on all of the maybe bins and boxes I've kept. But that can be something as simple as that. Or maybe you know someone that you, you trust, that you're comfortable with, that will help you through this process. You know, how are we going to go about doing this so we can make these decisions? Okay, so from all of the DIY projects that we've done in here, from the basement, the bathroom, the dust coming from 
uh, outside, inside, because this is this is an addition. Oh, you're not gonna be able to see me. Look, I don't know if you can see this. We this side is so much more puffier, and every time I laugh, it goes over here. It's just the weirdest thing. Is the lighting gonna do this to me? Like, come on. There, it's just the time of day. Yeah, it's weird. My, it's actually, my face is so much more swollen today than it was yesterday, and I'm having a really difficult time controlling the side of my face and my speech, and every time I laugh, I go over. It's just the weirdest thing. Anyway, so I got comfortable. I changed for the third time today. Um, this is a, a four season porch. So it's an addition to the house. There is no ventilation in here. No AC, no heating, nothing. The only thing that we have in here is the fireplace and that's why it's considered a four season because it's completely enclosed and we have heat in here for the winter, although our fireplace doesn't work, so we have a space heater or that thing over there. Um, but that's all it is, it's just a porch. It's an enclosed porch. It's an addition to the house, but it's an enclosed porch. And the majority of this room is windows because it's a porch. So uh, because of all of the debris coming from outside inside, uh, and then the DIY projects that we've been doing in here, because sometimes we work in here, we use it as like a like a workshop almost. So from the basement to uh, the bathroom, the uh, this this area, and I haven't cleaned it in a long time, has just gotten really dirty. This side of the windows here, they're completely cleaned. Look at that. Yeah, that is from outside, the dust coming from outside. This is from uh, all of the sawing that my dad and Ian did in here when they were cutting pieces of wood for the bathroom. It's just, wow. Uh, I didn't see it at first. And the, the lamp over here. So I gotta get a new one. But I couldn't see it. It didn't look that bad. Uh, it was that bad. Yeah. So really going in with a, with a plan. It doesn't have to be a concrete one. Even a rough draft plan. A plan is a plan. It, the plans can always change. Your journey can always change. I may not be where I'm at today a couple years from now. I may change. As long as I'm changing in a positive direction, in a positive way, you know, I'm changing for the better. That's all I care about. Because I think we always change every so often. You know, our styles change, the way we think and perceive things change. And that's, that's amazing. But as long as I'm changing in a good direction for the better, I'm always striving to be a better version of myself than yesterday, then that's great. That's amazing. Okie dokie. Is it going to focus? There we go. Uh, it is night. It's about 8.15. I'm going to do a couple more things in here. I had to do my daily to-do stuff around the house. I do that every day, uh, 15 to 20 minutes a day. I also had to do a couple loads of laundry. So this thing, <laughs> I can't fit it in Zoe's room. She plays with it, she loves it. I've had it in here, but I think I'm gonna move it out and I'm gonna put it, I'll show you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm gonna put it here. It's not ideal uh, at all whatsoever. This is not ideal. I don't want it here forever, but uh, 
this is where it's gonna go for right now until the basement is finished. And when the basement is finished, then we'll put that down there because it'll be finished. It'll be, well not finished, but we're making it over. It'll be nice down there. So, um, what was I gonna say? Look at all that. That's what we have to go through in the next video. I don't even, oh, the tools. I don't even wanna talk about the tools. This is all the laundry I still have. Yeah, yeah. Future video. These are some of the maybe boxes, bins, there's bins and boxes in there of maybe stuff that I have put in the maybe pile over the last couple years of decluttering. <laughs> That's a future video. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, I'm gonna wipe this down and then I'm gonna start working. This is like all of the stuff so far that we're getting rid of. Uh, and then I'm getting rid of a lot of the tile. Not Ian's work boot, <laughs> but a lot of the tile because I thought, okay, I don't need that much. I'll just keep this much until I figure out if I want to do that to the counter. I'll have to make a decision quickly because I don't want to keep this stuff if I'm not going to do anything with it. These boards, a lot of this stuff was under the sink. Yeah. So, and then I use some of those popcorn buckets as paint buckets. If you remember in the bathroom makeover, I used a popcorn bin as paint, uh, uh, as a paint bucket because I made my own green paint. Yeah, so that's all going. But I want to get uh, the cords and electronic stuff out of the way. I want to get that done before the end of the night. And then those filing it's a wall file holder. I don't know if you can see it. It's next to the pillow. And I washed all of the throw blankets and, and pillow case covers, throw pillow covers. So we'll put that on tomorrow. I'm going to just whip through the living room really quick because the next video, because we're going through the bedrooms and the hallways, that's going to be a project. So I really want to get the living room out of the way. I know that's going to be a long video, but anywho... I didn't, I wasn't expecting to do this much in today's video, but I want to put those filing bins up on the wall because I sit here when I edit. This is where I work because I don't have an office. So um, if I'm going to work in here, I might as well utilize those filing uh, wall file holders and put a lot of what is um, up here in, in those filing bins. All of the windows are cleaned, except I do have to get this, uh, when these windows, and I gotta wipe down the uh, cabinets. But all of the windows, all the rest of the windows, cabinets, fan, light fixture, windowsill, popcorn maker, the sink area is all clean. So I don't think we have too much left. Um, so yeah, I'll get this out of the way off camera. Okay, so I've been trying to um, mess around with this thing for the last five minutes, and here's the conclusion that I came up with. Um, I'm going to get rid of all of it. Yep. Um, if, if we're missing something, we're missing something, and I will we'll cross that bridge when we get there, but I really just want to start over. <laughs> so, um, good luck. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna, um, we're gonna just get rid of all of this. <laughs> I don't care. Okay, I guarantee, guarantee there are more cords and electronic stuff floating around the house, but this is for the house. So if I find, if I find any more, sorry, I'm having a hard time talking. <laughs> uh, I will put it in here. This is my stuff, which will go back down here. So my stuff is here, and then the house stuff is over there. And then I'm going to wipe down these, uh, the inside of the cabinets here. Throughout today's video, I've been talking about those tiles in the grocery bags, but I haven't, I don't think I've talked about why I kept them. 
So those tiles are from the bathroom makeover. Those were the tiles on the bathroom wall that we took off. I kept them to make, uh, I wanted to put them on the counter in the fourth season. Ooh, what the hell is that? Oh, okay. What is that? I don't know. I don't like it. A long time ago, I did a makeover on this room. And when I made over this room, I DIY'd the large counter in this room. I made a countertop using extra wood flooring that we had on hand. The problem is, is that when we made over the bathroom not too long ago, I had to take that wood uh, flooring off of the countertop because we needed it to finish the bathroom floor. So as of currently, there is no countertop on the large counter over by the sink in this room. So what I thought was taking the tile that we took off of the bathroom wall and upcycling it, DIYing it, making a countertop uh, using that tile. The thing is, is I have way too much of it. I didn't need to keep all of that. Uh, but I also don't even know if I want to do that to the countertop. So that's why I got rid of a lot of the tile because I figured, why am I keeping all of this when A, I don't need all of that and B, I don't even know if I'm going to do that. So I'm still questioning it. I'm still debating it. Uh, I had no idea that this little heater was that dirty. So I haven't even had it that long. So uh, yeah, that, all of this is going to be clean. Everything on the table, everything down there, these boards, all of it's going. So I wanted to show you everything that we're decluttering from today's video because I have to clean this table. So I just wanted to get all of this crap, it's crap, <laughs> out of the way. Uh, this is stuff from the dining room. All of this is getting donated. This is mostly Play-Doh arts and crafts. There's some brand new coloring books in here. This is all getting donated. This was recycling. This whole box is full of recyclables. This is recycling, but there is some stuff on here that I can recycle too. And then here's some of the tiles that we're getting rid of because I don't need all of that. More tiles. We're donating these two puzzles here because Zoe doesn't want them anymore. And this game. Uh, I didn't know we had two of the same games. So that's, yeah, duplicates. It can be an issue in this household sometimes. I did go through all of these cords with my husband. Uh, I asked him if there's anything he needed. He said no. I asked my son if there's anything in here that he needed. He said no, so we're getting rid of all of that. There is some broken stuff in here. This bin is done for. This was under the sink. This was under the sink. This is shot. A lot of this stuff was under the sink in my arts and crafts bin, uh, electrical stuff. This whole bag here is full of wood, just wood. Yeah, a lot of it, like these notebooks, there's pieces of paper here that can get recycled. Um, I broke this is, this was, this was sad. This, my grandmother gave me this and it broke. I don't know how, but it's time to let it go. I can't fix it. Uh, and this broke for the second time. I broke this egg last year, taped it together and it fell from the mantle. This is what I did to the fireplace. I think it looks a lot better. Not 100% on the mantle yet, but I think it looks a lot better. But the egg was on there and it fell. So I'm getting rid of that, but uh, it's all junk. <laughs> it's crap. It's just, it's all crap that's still in my home, cluttering up my home. And looking at all of this stuff, a lot of it, we've had for years. Like I've had a lot of this stuff for years and I don't know why I, I mean, to be honest with you, I'm, I never use this. I never use this and I never use this and I kept it for years and I don't know why. I just, I don't, I, anyway, should I spray paint the rest of this black and then donate it or just get rid of it? I don't know. So anyway, that's it.
Just wanted to show you, we're gonna move on. Look at all that, just crap. Okie dokie friends, we are at the end of today's video. I am going to wrap up today's video. There's a couple of things I wanted to go over. I have some notes in front of me. Uh, I am finishing up the four season here. Uh, I'm just wiping down the table. I am really wiping this table down top to bottom, wiping the chairs down top to bottom. Literally everything in the dining room and the four season was deep cleaned top to bottom. Uh, I actually had to wipe some stuff down multiple times, like the inside of the cabinets and drawers in here in the four season. I had to wipe down the tables in here and in the dining room a couple of times, especially the chairs. I have to get new dining room chairs or reupholster them. I would like to just get new chairs, but I have to reupholster the chairs at the very least. So I am going to make sometime in the future, I'm going to make a home projects video um, where we'll do some uh, projects around the house. Like there's some stuff in the bathroom I got to finish. There's, uh, you know, the reupholstering the chairs or getting new chairs. I have to fix that cabinet door in the dining room with the blue tape. There was blue tape in the inside of the cabinet door. <laughs> I got to fix that. There's just a bunch of little stuff around the house that I got to fix that I want to do. I want to do something to the countertop in this room. So I'll make a, a future home projects video. In that video, I would like to do some re rearranging or rearranging. <laughs> uh, and a little bit of like a refresh in some areas uh, around the house. So that'll be a fun video. But a um, couple of things that I wanted to mention. Um, this took me a lot longer than I expected. I, I wasn't planning on doing this much uh, decluttering and organization in today's video. That's what took me the longest. Uh, I wanted to add in some more deep cleaning. I actually had to speed up some of the parts in today's video a little bit more than I would like to, because I like to jam pack as much as I can into every video. So there was a lot of deep cleaning done off camera. Like for example, I cleaned the countertop in the dining room. All of the decor was cleaned in the dining room, all of the light fixtures, the shelf that's uh, up on the wall in the dining room was cleaned, everything. But I wanted to add that, couldn't add everything, just like I wanted to add uh, deep cleaning, decluttering, and organizing under the sink. But I can only jam pack so much into a video. <laughs> but everything was done. Uh, it looks fantastic. But yeah, it was a little more tedious just because, like, for example, I was going through every single marker, crayon. Uh, Play-Doh, you know, making sure that there wasn't stuff that was junk or broke, things that just didn't need to be in these areas. So it was a little bit more time consuming. Uh, what else was I going to mention? You know, there was a, oh, I wanted to talk about the new product in today's video, but I don't have enough time to get into it. I actually used it in today's video, but I won't talk about it until the next video. So I'll, I'll wait for that. I love it. So we'll wait for that. But that is it for today's video, everyone. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please head on over to Shannon's channel, Leaf Like on a Tree. Let her know that I sent you. You are going to love her as much as I do. She is absolutely wonderful. She is amazing. And I just love and appreciate her so much. So huge special thank you to Shannon for doing this series with me. And uh, next video will not be a part of the series. Uh, I have another, I'm taking a break next week from the series, so I have another video coming out. But after that video, we will head back into the series and uh, finish up the series. So thank you so much for being here with me. I love and appreciate you so much. And we will talk to you on the next one. Bye everyone.